Hello gardeners, hopefully I'm catching you right when you're about to set up your hydroponic garden or maybe you're just getting into it or maybe you just bought a tower garden and you don't know exactly what to do. I made this video as kind of a crash course into hydroponics, how to set up your hydroponic garden, how to maintain it every step of the way. I also made a course guide for you. Um, don't expect you to retain all of the information in this video. It's gonna be a lot of things we're gonna go over. So download that free guide. We're also gonna kind of use it as a script and just run through everything in this video. So. Make sure you download that from the link in the description box and let's get right in. All right, so first thing we're gonna talk about is pH, how to measure pH, what is your pH, and what could throw your pH off. Well, your pH is really just, it's a scale from zero to 14, a zero being extremely acidic water and 14 being very alkaline or basic water, and right in the middle, you're gonna find seven. Seven is the pH you're gonna find for standard gardens. Make sure when you're searching for the preferred pH for your plant, you type in for a hydroponic garden because typically you're gonna find hydroponic gardens prefer, prefer a more acidic pH right around six instead of seven. The best way to figure out what pH your plant would prefer is a good old Google search. Let's say you're trying to grow broccoli, just type in what is the preferred pH for a broccoli plant in a hydroponic garden? And there you go. Okay, now ways you can measure your pH. I'm not even gonna talk to you guys about analog strips and doing it the old fashioned way with iodine because if you're serious about hydroponic gardening, then you're gonna be taking pH readings a lot every day. The only way to go really is with a digital pH meter. I linked a bunch of stuff up in the description box. I also have my affiliate store. You could also check out what I use over there. With one of these meters, you simply put the tip of the pH meter into the water, turn it on and it should tell you the pH. Now, the thing is when reading your pH, give it some time. Don't expect this to just tell you what the pH is right off the bat. In fact, you wanna leave it in the water for, I'd say like two minutes is probably a good period of time to read a pH. A lot of times I'll go to do a pH reading and then I'll break away and start doing something else in the garden and come back because it takes a while for the reading to actually happen. So make sure you give it some time. All right, now when to check your pH. I check my pH anytime I get into my garden. If I'm taking water out to do a sample to see what EC I'm at, then I'm gonna check my pH. If something's wrong with my garden, first thing I do is check the pH. So I would say you should check your pH daily. It should be the one thing that you consistently do as a hydroponic gardener. Now, what things could throw off your pH? In the early stages of growth, there aren't that many things that are gonna throw off your pH. The biggest thing is gonna be temperature of the water. The temperature does have a significant impact on your pH. If you get colder temperatures, that's gonna make your pH more acidic and higher temperatures are gonna make it more alkaline. If you're in a hydroponic garden, then you wanna make sure you're maintaining your pH exactly where you want it to be for that part of the growth cycle. So having something like temperature throw it off could definitely be something that you wanna take into consideration. Nutrients. So when you add nutrients to your garden, you're automatically going to be lowering your pH. Nutrients by nature have a more acidic property to them, so they lower the pH of your garden. Don't take the readings of your water's pH until after you've added your nutrients and mix them properly, then take the reading. That's gonna be a much more accurate representation of what your plants can be getting. The third thing that can affect your pH is carbon dioxide concentration. So when your roots are respiring, they are actually releasing carbon back into the water. When a plant is in the flowering stage, when it's in the late growth, you can see your, your pH drop significantly because the amount of root respiration happening is uh, significantly affecting the pH by making it go much more acidic. So if you do see your pH kind of going down and you're having a hard time bringing it back up, chances are your plant's just doing a really great job of respiring, your roots are working properly, and the carbon going back into the water is just causing it to become more acidic. So that's just something to be aware of as your plant matures. So a couple things to note when it comes to maintaining your pH. Store your meters, your pH, your EC meters, store them in some 6.0 cleaned zero EC water. Uh, if, you, if you allow the tip to dry out, that could have a significant impact on how often you're gonna need to calibrate it. Um, so I always store my meters with the tips in water. Also be sure to follow your manufacturer's guidelines for uh, recalibrating your meters weekly. That's crucial for making sure that your readings are staying on par. This is the only reason that I would keep around the old school uh, like iodine or little test strips is to test my calibrations to make sure that everything is, is juicy and good. Did I just say juicy? I did and I meant it. 
All right, now let's say you take a pH reading and it's way off in either directions and you need to make adjustments. That's where you'd bring in pH up or pH down. Use this sparingly, you only need a few drops, a little dab will do you. So I just do a few drops per gallon when I'm trying to adjust my pH. You'll get used to the amount that you're supposed to add over time. That's just something that comes with experience. And you'll start to become a lot more familiar with how much to add depending on how more acidic or more basic you need to make your water. All right, so measuring and topping off your nutrients. Now, when we first start our garden, we're gonna to wanna to start with a pretty low EC. The way we measure our EC is with one of these, an EC or TDS meter. Uh, that stands for electrical conductivity or total dissolved solids. These meters are gonna tell us the amount of nutrients or really particulates in our water, but they're not gonna tell us what is in there particularly. So you need to make sure you start with a clean base as close to zero EC as you can possibly get so that we know everything that we're adding is what that final number is that we're reading on our EC or TDS meter. So we'll start with zero EC water and then we'll add our nutrients appropriately. If you follow the back of the bottle in this general hydroponics flora series, you really can't go wrong. I would always start with a lower EC, something around four or 500 and then take it up to around seven to 1100 for flowering stage. Uh, that all depends on what you're growing. This is all information that you're gonna wanna look up separately to make sure you know um, the EC that your plants are, I'm sorry, I was actually just giving you the PPM. Um, the parts per million were the numbers that I was just spitting out. The EC would be more like uh, 0. 0.2 six when you're first starting between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 and then something like 1.0 to 2.0 uh, as the plants developing and getting larger and, and going through its flowering stages so when we top off our garden we're going to take a reading first initially of where the garden is to check the ec and the ph to see which if we need to make any adjustments to either whether we need to bring them up down. Then we can mix the next batch for the top offs accordingly. And remember, if we're trying to significantly bring the nutrients up, then we want to have the next batch have a much higher concentration of nutrients to, to make sure that the, the level gets brought up. One thing to keep in consideration when we're topping off is we can top off more than I would say a quarter gallon at a time into a five gallon bucket. Uh, the roots can actually drown if they get used to not having water for a few hours and kind of and start to gather their nutrients more aeroponically from the moisture in the air. When you dump a bunch of water in there, they will drown and your plant will wilt over and you'll wonder what happened. So whenever you're topping off, if you're topping off a significant amount of water, make sure you just add uh, a little bit to incrementally to get to that, that larger full five gallon bucket. This also gives you a good opportunity to add a little bit, take a reading, see where you're at, wait 15, 20 minutes, add a little more, take a reading, see where you're at. It's more labor intensive, but I mean, hydroponics is more labor intensive. You're gonna have a better product because of it. Whatever you're growing is gonna be better because you've put the time and energy into it and, uh, and you dove into hydroponics, so good for you. So let's say things have gone terribly wrong in your garden. You got root rot, you got algae, something is just going wrong. You don't know what it is. Maybe your nutrients are completely imbalanced. Um, and you need to just kind of start all over again. A good reason to start all over again would be like if you've developed a fungus and you want to still try to save the plant, you can clean the roots off, but you don't want to put the plant back in the same bucket. So this is where I would implement a bucket swap. The same rule applies when you do a bucket swap as when you do a top off. Make sure the water level is the same on the new bucket as it was on the old bucket. And then if you're trying to fill that all the way back up, then do that incrementally or the plant will drown and you'll see those signs very quickly. All right, so cleaning and sanitation practices. There is one secret weapon and it is hydrogen peroxide, specifically food grade hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is, is a natural oxygenator and it's gonna add oxygen to your, to your roots, which is something that just makes them grow better. But also when you add that extra oxygen in water, it creates bubbles. Those bubbles are gonna clean off the roots and they're gonna prevent root rot from happening in the first place. So add a decent amount. I add 15 milliliters per gallon of hydrogen peroxide to my garden every four to six days. If I'm seeing root rot, I'll double that. So let's get into root rot for a second. Probably the biggest killer of hydroponic gardens um, and what causes root rot is a lack of oxygen in a warm environment. 
Basically, root rot is really just kind of an umbrella term for any bacteria, fungus, or water algae that is able to attack your roots. So the key is to keep your roots in an environment that is non-conducive to the growth of those things, those pathogens. And the way we're gonna do that is to make sure that our water is never higher than 83 degrees. I've noticed that's kind of the magic number. Once you, once you approach the low 80s, things can kind of get really weird and that's when root rot starts to happen. The other thing being the oxygen deprived environment, and that's why hydrogen peroxide, and that's why one of the reasons that hydrogen peroxide is so great at fighting root rot. The other reason is because the bubbles actually get in there and break the little bits of the root rot apart and off of the roots physically. So that's how I would treat a plant that has really serious root rot. So if I had a plant that I was trying to save, the way that I would do it is pull the plant from the garden, completely do a bucket swap on that garden, but first I would soak that plant in hydrogen peroxide, 3% for about 20 minutes. I mean, you can watch it and, and monitor it for that period of time to see just how much it's removing from the roots and if they seem to get clean faster, then you can remove from that and put it back in the garden. So hydrogen peroxide, that is the way to prevent and the way to cure uh, root rot if it's not too serious. If it's really bad, then you'll accidentally likely bring it back into your garden once again. Um, but if your water temperature is low enough, then it might not be able to make it that time. So that's the hope. What about algae? So algae is just a sneaky little guy. He likes to grow in places that are wet and well lit. And that's really all you need to know because if you can keep your surfaces from being wet and well lit, then you'll prevent having algae. Now, a big mistake that people make when they're first starting off is they'll make their gardens out of materials that are too thin uh, that light can get through. So the light from their grow light or the sun gets through their actual garden and then they begin to develop algae inside of their garden. This is a nightmare. And usually when you start to develop algae inside of your garden, um, it's a recipe for disaster. That's pretty easy to prevent by making your garden not translucent. Don't allow light in there. You can paint it, you can cover it with something. Just make sure you don't have a consistently wet surface that's available to light. The rock wool's a great surface that can be covered up by just hydroponic clay pebbles and that can prevent light from hitting the rock wool and that can prevent you from getting algae around the stem area which can steal a lot of nutrients from especially young plants. All right, so those are some of my tips. I hope this video has been helpful to you guys. Don't forget to download that guide and let's keep growing together. Thank you.